Scrum is a lightweight framework that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems. The Scrum framework is made up of five values, three accountabilities, three artifacts, and five events. In this video, I'll go through an overview of each one, explaining what they're for and why they are there. The focus will be on the process itself, and we'll leave any complementary practices until later. My name is Martin Hinchelwood. I've been a professional Scrum trainer for 12 years, professional Kanban trainer for two years, and a Microsoft MVP in DevOps for 14 years. Scrum is based on empiricism, the three pillars of which are transparency, inspection, and adaption. Empiricism is impossible without transparency, and in order to get transparency, we need trust. Without it, we'd be unable to see what's going on. Trust is not something that just happens. It needs considerable and deliberate effort to create and maintain. The five Scrum values help guide and inform the team decisions and help support trust and empathy. These values are courage, focus, respect, openness, and commitment. Their purpose is to help build and support the trust needed to maintain the transparency required to get the most effective teams. The three accountabilities. Although you may see these same names used as job titles, this was not the intent of the Scrum framework and is the result of 25 years of accumulated misunderstandings. There are three accountabilities in Scrum, which together form the Scrum team. The Scrum team is entrusted by the organization to create value for each sprint. They operate as a decentralized, collaborative and autonomous team that is responsible for stakeholder collaboration, verification, maintenance, operations, experimentation, research, development, and anything else that might be required to create a successful product. The accountability of the Scrum team is to effectively create a usable working product of the highest possible value. Let's see how that breaks down. The product owner is accountable for maximizing the value of the work done by the Scrum team. There are many activities that they might employ to help them maximize that value. For example, developing and explicitly communicating the product goal, creating and clearly communicating product backlog items, ordering product backlog items, and ensuring that the product backlog is visible, transparent, and understood. While the product owner remains accountable, there is no requirement for them to physically do this work themselves. Delegating some or all of these activities enables the product owner to scale and to focus on the strategies they need to be successful. Scrum developers are accountable for creating a usable working product. The term developers here includes everyone involved in developing the product. Those folks may have skills in analysis, user experience, coding, testing, legal architecture, DevOps, or whatever other skills are required. The developers take accountability for planning, quality, and each other. The Scrum Master is accountable for the effectiveness of the Scrum team. They do this by providing services to the developers, the product owner, and the organization as a lean, agile practitioner. They have deep knowledge of the technology required by the Scrum team to be successful. These technologies might include processes, practices, tools, and techniques relevant to the context of the product under development. They foster relationships between developers, the product owner, and the stakeholders to create an environment with which, within which they can all be successful. The Scrum Master does not write or order backlog items, administer JIRA, or tell the developers what to do. In addition to these three accountabilities, there are stakeholders. A stakeholder is a general term given to anyone outside of the Scrum team that has an interest in their work. 
While stakeholders do not have specific accountability, they are expected to be involved in the process by providing feedback and collaborating with the Scrum team as often as needed. While I have you here, please like this video and subscribe to our channel below so that you can get access to more of this type of content. There are three artifacts in Scrum. Without being able to see what is going on, we can't really make effective decisions and each of the artifacts exists to provide the transparency that is the foundation of any empirical system. To provide this transparency, there are three artifacts in Scrum. First is the product backlog, the purpose of which is to provide transparency over what we need to do next. That is, it provides transparency of the future. The product backlog is an ordered inventory of things that we need to be true for the product to be successful. It should not contain more items than the product owner can easily understand and articulate, but enough to foster understanding and the success for the product. Too many items create too many assumptions. The commitment to the product backlog is the product goal. The product goal reflects the desired outcome for the next few sprints and informs, but does not control, the contents of the product backlog. While the product goal provides focus, it does not preclude incorporating feedback, features of opportunity, or other things as needed. Next is the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog contains three things. A sprint goal, the work that the developers have selected for this sprint, and an implementation plan to help them get started. The purpose of the sprint backlog is to provide transparency over what we are doing now, ergo transparency of the present. The commitment to the sprint backlog is the sprint goal, which informs, but does not control, the contents of the sprint backlog. During the sprint, the contents will dynamically adapt to the changing needs of the Scrum team and the business while maintaining the focus of the sprint goal. The sprint goal is collaboratively created and owned by the Scrum team and reflects the why of the sprint. While the sprint goal may only reflect part of the sprint backlog, with attention also given to augmenting existing functionality, refactoring and updating the product, dealing with technical atrophy and creating automation. Lastly, we have the product increment. Representing the entire product, it provides transparency over what we have done, i.e. transparency of the past. Each consecutive increment is a concrete step towards the product goal and must be usable. Usable is a combination of backlog items themselves and the quality measures that represent completeness. The formal description of those quality measures is the definition of done. The definition of done is the commitment to the product increment. It represents the minimum product and technical qualities that are required to be able to deliver your product to customers. It should mirror shippable. There are five Scrum events that serve empiricism. Sprint planning, daily Scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective are all time-boxed events. This means that you should spend enough time fulfilling the purpose of each event, but not more than the maximum specified in the time box. Wrapping the entire Scrum process is the sprint itself. The sprint is a fixed length, iteration within which in all the other activities are completed and represents the cadence of adaptation between the Scrum team and the stakeholders. While mentioned in the Scrum Guide, product backlog refinement is not a specific event. It's a term that represents all of the work done by the Scrum team on items in the product backlog rather than those selected for the current sprint. All of the work to understand, evaluate, document and size things that may end up in future sprints is regarded as refinement and every member of the Scrum team participates as needed.
It's also important to note that Scrum is 25 years old and the technology available to us at the time necessitated a clear focus on people being physically together. Applying new technological advances to the context of Scrum allows teams to operate in both synchronous and asynchronous collaboration as needed while still fulfilling the intent of the Scrum values. The first event in Scrum is sprint planning. This event is where the Scrum team inspects the product backlog and adapts the sprint backlog. Its purpose is to plan the sprint. Focus for the upcoming sprint is created with the sprint goal that is formulated by the Scrum team. The developers then select items from the product backlog that best enable them to work towards this goal while considering the order of the product backlog and the needs of the product. These choices may also trigger a change in the sprint goal. Next, the developers create enough of an implementation plan to allow them to get started. Creating too much of an implementation plan would create excessive overhead for the Scrum team as new information is discovered. The output of sprint planning is the sprint backlog, which contains the sprint goal, selected backlog items, and enough implementation details to get started. Next is the daily Scrum. The daily Scrum is a daily event by and for the developers where they maintain the transparency of the sprint backlog based on what's happened since the last one. The purpose of the daily scrum is for the developers to plan what they are tactically doing next to achieve success in this sprint. Based on the work that has been completed and new learnings uncovered since the last daily scrum, we may need to adapt the contents of the sprint backlog. While this tactical plan may change, the sprint goal remains constant and only the product owner can choose to abandon the current sprint goal and the sprint itself. The sprint review occurs near the end of the sprint. This event includes both the scrum team and stakeholders and is where the work for the scrum team is offered for inspection. The purpose of the sprint review is to plan what's next and maintain transparency of the product backlog. In pursuit of this transparency of the future, we need to reconcile the impact of changes in the product, the business and the market since the last sprint review on the product backlog and the product goal. This is a collaborative event where we physically update the product backlog to bring it in line with our current understanding of the future, maintaining its transparency. Finally, we have the sprint retrospective. It occurs immediately after the sprint review and allows the scrum team to inspect themselves and adapt their processes, practices, tools, and relationships. The purpose of the sprint retrospectives is for the scrum team to plan how they are going to increase their effectiveness. Finding ways for the scrum team to be as effective as possible within the bounds of the organizational constraints is the responsibility of the entire scrum team. Pushing the bounds of those organizational constraints is the accountability of the scrum master. These four events wrapped in the sprint form a set of concentric feedback loops that create an empirical process control system and allow the Scrum team to iteratively and incrementally create the best possible product within the current constraints. So the Scrum framework is made up of five values, three artifacts, three accountabilities, and five events. Nothing more, nothing less. Scrum framework is like the timber frame for your house. It does not control the use that you put to each room, its decorations or its content. It does, however, give structure and support where needed to maintain its structural integrity. If you want to change the timber frame of your house, you can, but due consideration must be given to the impact on that integrity. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel to encourage us to make more. If you need help getting started or just tuning up your existing Scrum, please use the QR code here or the link below to book a free consultation.